Namaste. My pranams to all Atma Jyotis, Divine Light of the Self. I welcome all of you for today's satsang with Swami Chidananji. Swami Chidananji is a very renowned speaker on Vedantic teaching. He comes from Chinmay Mission background. He has his own organization called Flame of Who Am I, which is more of a inquiring into the nature of self. He stays at Jiddu Krishna Buddha Center in Varanasi. His, of, his uh, Flame of Who Am I is in Bombay. Today we have a very interesting topic on erasing the ego. Swamiji is going to speak on erasing the ego as per teachings of Bhagavad Gita 2.71. Swamiji, we are very eager and interested to know how to erase the ego. Who has to erase the ego? And when you when I, when I erase, whether it's a, who, ego itself erases itself or somebody else has to erase the ego. And uh, the mechanism of erasing the ego based on teachings of Bhagavad Gita, we are ready to, we are very eager to listen to you. At the end of the session, we can have a question answer, a small interaction. So it's over to you, Swamiji. Right. Okay. Unmute, please. Yeah. Yeah, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Prabhuji. I am immensely happy to join all your students and you this afternoon and share thoughts on this topic, Erase the Ego. Let me begin with a short prayer. To that sage of Arunachala, Sri Ramana Maharshi. Okay, I hope I am back now. Yes, Swami. Ah. Uh, Swamiji, okay. you, are, you are back now. Uh, yeah. Is Swamiji visible to all? Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, okay. Prabhuji. He is spotlighted, yes, right? Yes, Prabhuji. Yeah. Yes, Swamiji, okay. please go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah. Apara Satchit Sukhavari Rasher. Yasyor mimatram bhuvanam samastam guhahitam tam ramanam gabhiram chinta vihinam radhi chintayami Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha We first take up the question, what do we mean by ego? What is ego? In ordinary usage, we call somebody egoistic if he or she throws his or her weight around and we get indications that the person is thinking he or she is higher than others 
is to be respected more than others are and so on. Therefore, let me clarify right at the outset. In the spiritual philosophy, the word ego does not mean only superiority. Even inferiority is a form of ego. Because ego is essentially the separate self. When we feel inferior to somebody, then also we feel separate. We feel they are higher and we are lower. And some other place we feel we are higher and somebody else is lower. All this high and low is the foul smell of ego. Therefore, by ego we mean a sense of separation about the little I. If the I that all of us experience within us mingles with all, does not suffer from any complex, sees things but does not suffer from jealousy or pride, then there is no ego. Therefore, it is possible to live without ego, though not easy. Bhagavad Gita praises absence of ego at many places. Right away in the second chapter, in the famous Sthita Prajna Lakshana portion, Sri Krishna says, Vihaya Kaman Yasarvan Puman Sharati Nispraha Nirmamaha Nirahankaraha Sashanti Madigachati. Take the portion Nir Nirmamaha Nirahankaraha Saha Shantim Adigachati. If you want peace, you need to be free of Mama and Aham. I believe in a popular story that goes around, they say, somebody went to the Buddha and said, I want happiness. And the Buddha said to him, remove want and remove I, happiness alone remains. Want is what Sri Krishna calls Mama and Aham is what Sri Krishna calls Aham, Nirmamaha Nirahankaraha, Sashanti Madhigachat. Happiness is waiting for us to experience if only we could let go of Aham and Mama. All through the chapters of Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna mentions, makes a comment here, makes a remark over there, how to be free of ego is indeed total freedom. All the way till 18th chapter, he does highlight erasure of ego. In the 18th chapter, there's a powerful verse, chapter 18, verse 17. Yasya nahankrito bhavaha buddhir yasya nalipyate Atvapisa iman lokan nahanti nanibadhyate. It's a powerful statement because <laughs> he says, Yasya na ahankritaha bhavaha. Ahankrita is same as ahankara. Whoever, man or woman, has no ego in him or her, does not get bound does not get affected even if he or she kills a lot of people. Hattva api sa iman lokan na hanti na nibadhyate. Wow! Any hasty reader of Gita may imagine. Then I will just get rid of this ego and then I can do anything. I can kill people also. <laughs> As though Letting go of the ego is easy. In fact, to say somebody without ego may do anything but does not get or will not get bound is not a sanction 
not a blanket approval for doing anything. Sri Krishna is not saying anyone can go around and kill people. But he is highlighting what a boundless freedom it is if we are free from this ill-conceived ego. Swami Sinmayanandaji, with whose organization I was till 2002, used to say the ego is nothing but a bundle of memories. If one of us was honored, felicitated, brought to the stage and garlanded, etc., a number of times, those memories stick in our head. Then we go to some new place where nobody knows us, but we will be going there with chest up and we may even expect these new people who don't know us to garland us, to praise us, but they have better things to think about. They do not care and it may even hurt us. It may embarrass us. How come nobody is getting up to respect us? Because the memories of how we were respected, talked well of, constitute one form of ego. And I'm sorry to say, many criminals who have become criminals because this cruel society at some point insulted them, neglected them, exploited them, denied to them their basic human rights. And something in them was not at all accepting it. And they then developed a negative ego. And then they do crimes without any compunction. So how true Swami Chinmayananji was, it is the memories of praise or insult, honor or neglect that form the ego in us. Sri Krishna is known above all in the Bhagavad Gita for recommending karma yoga. Karmani eva adhikaraste maafale shukadachana is the perhaps most famous line of the Gita. I would like to say, dear friends, in the light of this afternoon's topic, this karma yoga is an excellent way of weakening our ego. Karma yoga, otherwise called Nishkama karma, weakens the ego. And what is more, gives us a glimpse of Atma Sukha. We don't need really much to be happy. But there is a ignorance, confusion. I should get this, I should get that. I should go there. This person should praise me. That person should love me. And so on. This is foolish. In Karma Yoga, we serve people or we do Ishwara Puja, Rama or Krishna, Shiva or Devi. We do Puja. And more than what we do, we say or we go about with the attitude I don't need anything. God, give me more love for your lotus feet. Or when we serve people, in our heart, there is a strong voice. I don't want anything in return. If they are happy, that will make me happy. If their tears are wiped, that is my happiness. So in such nishkama karma, on one hand, our ego gets weakened. On the other, we see that, hey, I am happier than ever before in serving people or serving, worshipping God without asking for anything. In the fifth chapter, Sri Krishna says in a single verse, very nice contrast. Yuktaha karma phalam tyaktva Shanti maapnoti naishthikim ayuktaha kama karena phale sakto nibadhyate. A karma yogi phalam tyaktva, 
letting go of hankering after results, rewards, fruits of action, attains great peace. Shantim apnoti naishtikim. The 12th verse of chapter 5 says so. Whereas someone who hasn't mastered the skill of karma yoga, called here ayuktaha, ayuktaha kamakarena phale saktaha nibadyate. Now, I must in a passing manner say, Bhagavad Gita recommends several therapies, several solutions, several treatments. Just a moment. So, bhakti, yoga, then karma yoga I already talked about, and dana. These are the four most celebrated paths in Indian spirituality. Gita covers all these at various places. However, in the limited time available to us, I will be touching upon the approach of dana yoga. Maharshi Ramana himself used to say, there are two ways to freedom, to mukti, to moksha. And the two are surrender or inquire. Surrender is the hallmark of bhakti. Inquire is jnana yoga. For he especially highlighted inquiry, who am I? Therefore, Prabhuji rightly said, my non-government organization is called Fawar, flame of who am I? That expression, who am I, is inspired by Sri Ramana Maharshi. Now, Karma Yoga and Raja Yoga also belong to this Bhakti and Jnana in a little modified manner. All of them help to weaken the ego. But I will spend a little more time on Dana Yoga. Dana Yoga itself is of two kinds. To ask oneself, who am I? When we lose and it pains us, we become a little depressed that we have lost in some game, in some business, in some interaction. We are to ask ourselves, who lost? Our mind says, I lost. Then we ask, who am I? And if you pursue this inquiry, who am I? With some Vedanta inputs, some guidance from competent persons, the question, who am I, can remove all our ego. The second one is Adi Shankara's classical approach and Bhagavad Gita in more explicit ways supports Adi Shankara's classical way of highlighting how the true nature of ours is no different from the truth of this entire universe. The truth of this universe is called Brahma. The truth of the existence of any one of us is Atma. Jiva Brahma Aikya or Atma Brahma Aikya is the classical summary of Vedanta. What does Vedanta say? Suppose is the question, above all, in classical traditional Vedanta, the answer is, Vedanta points out the oneness between Atma, truth of the Jiva, 
and Brahma, truth of Ishwara as well as the entire universe. So what has that got to do with erasing the ego? Well, if you and I, who by long practice, by old habit, go on thinking about where I won, where I lost, where I made it, where I failed, where somebody praised me, where somebody insulted me, this goes on and on and on. Instead of dwelling on this story of the little I, if with the guidance from Upanishads, we dwell on our pure self, I am Sat Chit. I am pure existence, pure awareness. I have a body, but I am not the body. I have a mind, but the ups and downs that the mind goes through have nothing to do with me. It's not just two or three sentences, but it's quite a lot of very uplifting Vedanta literature. Most of you have been hearing Prabhuji, highlighting, um, explaining, showing the logical basis of a whole lot of Vedanta statements, Vedanta shlokas, Vedanta mantras, Vedanta declarations. Therefore, to study with a competent teacher and get a clear understanding of how we are Satchidananda Atma and not this body and mind constitute. the great grand chikitsa treatment to this ailment called. So the difference between traditional special variation made popular by Sri Ramana Maharshi is that in Vedanta Tattvam Asi the Mahavakya comes in Tat is God, Tvam is every one of us the truth of God and truth of individual are one so it gives importance to both Tat and Tvam. In the Maharshi Ramana's material, with due regard to classical Vedanta, without dismissing or denying the power or the effectiveness of the approach of going into the inner meaning of both Tat and Tvam. However, the highlighting is of Tvam. Tvam is every one of us. It is Tvam, you, because in the setting, the Guru says to the student, you are that. And the student, when he applies his intelligence to that, the so-called you for the student becomes I. Oh, am I that? Am I already free? Difficult to believe. Am I already Nitya Mukta, Nitya Shuddha are the words that come in Vedanta. Therefore, we need to look at how Bhagavad Gita supports really both Atma Vichara, who am I, inquiry, and Atma Chintana, the traditional dwelling on what is said about the pure self in the scriptures. We will take a couple of examples. For example, even though the chapter 3 is Karma Yoga, towards the end, Lord Krishna says to us, you know, really speaking, everything is being done by Prakriti. Prakriti Kriyamanani Gunai Karmani Sarvashaha. And those who are deluded by egoism, Think that they are doing it. Ahankara vimudhatma karta ahamiti manyate. This is the 27th verse of chapter 3. People deluded by ego. That's our topic. 
egoism makes us celebrate when we get good marks more marks than all other students in the class even as we are in school high school <laughs> you know, we feel on top of the world we wrote well we answered the questions well and we have stood first in the class i did and i am now enjoying and some other time god forbid in some matter we perform poorly then our mind says i did not do well i goofed up in this test or exhibition or competition and accordingly i am at the bottom of the list oh and we suffer vedanta says the truth of the matter is you neither did nor enjoyed you neither did nor suffered you are not the karta you are not the bhokta i call this the approach of revealing the truth how far the other person understands is a different matter the truth is whether you understand or not whether you like it or not you are not the doer shri krishna has said it in the gita prakrite he kriyamana ani gune karma ani sarvasha the cross order being sarvasha karmani all things that are done prakrite he gunaihi kriyamana ani are done by the gunas of prakriti sattva rajas and tamas are doing it all you know there was a firefighter who came to the scene of a building that was burning in fact so already such high flames had engulfed the building and people were so unhappy all of them had come out of the building to save themselves there were residential places inside and one mother was screaming outside the house we came out in a hurry our child is inside can somebody save our child but it was so dangerous to get inside the burning building for this firefighter about whom i am talking he came with the fire engine and without even stopping in front of the building went straight inside and now as people are watching he came out with the baby in his hands the mother of the baby was so happy so relieved so thankful who oh, her joy knew no bounds next day this firefighter was felicitated in that town the brave firefighter risking his own life took his engine also inside the burning building and saved the child and brought the child out the firefighter gracefully accepted all the compliments all the praise at the end he was given 10 minutes to speak if he wanted to he got up and said i am overwhelmed by all the good will that you have shown me but i must tell you the truth now when i came in my fire engine from our department to this burning building from a distance i looked at the flames and said this is dangerous i must be at a distance i should not go near but as i came very close to the building i realized that my brakes had failed i couldn't do anything my brakes of the fire engine had failed and my fire engine went inside hit against some pillar and stopped and to save myself i jumped out of the fire engine and as i got down i saw right in front of my eyes a child crying ha huh, that much i did i picked up the child and came out really it was not my courage or spirit of sacrifice or some blah blah all credit should go to the fire engine the brakes of which did not work that's what sri krishna says all credit or discredit should go to prakriti prakriti does good things prakriti does bad things i don't come into the picture none of us is into this is revelation whether you like it or not 
whether you can understand it or not is a different matter so chapter 3 says and in a different way chapter 5 reveals our true nature light of the self what is the light of the self it's like akarta abhokta chapter 5 in two or three verses eighth and ninth verses says naiva kinchit karomi iti yukto manne tatvavit pashyan shranvan sprishan jigran ashnan gachan swapan swasan pralapan visrajan grahnan unmishan nimishan api interesting a uh, list of what we call present participles in sanskrit you know pashyan shranvan sprashan jigran ashnan gachan swapan swasan pralapan visrajan grahnan what is this all this an an like in tamil nadu you have raman krishnan uh, madavan achutan like that you have here uh, what is that 5.8 here pashyan shranvan pashyan shranvan means while seeing while hearing while touching while smelling while walking while sitting while standing while 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 that is called present participle a list of present participles is given by shri krishna but what is the message while doing anything under the sun a wise man or a wise lady knows in all clarity i am not doing naiva kinchit karomi then who under the sun is doing all this earlier we said prakriti here the language is used is indriyani indriyarteshu vartante iti dharayan spiritual wisdom whenever you get it whenever you have it will make you see that it is the senses that are engaging in sense objects the ears engage in sounds eyes engage in forms and colors nose engages in smell where do i come into the picture i am only the witness i am only the sakshi i am the chaitanya tattva i am the light of the self the light illumines everything and does not own nor disown it watches in this way the revelation those who reflect on the revelation those who first hear shravana and then do reflect manana and then they stay in that outlook having been pretty clear on how it is so they establish themselves in the atma atmanishtah bhavishyanti they become atmanishta today people are dehanishta today they are so identified with this body and then therefore it seems they are doing they are losing they are winning if they are atmanishta they they see that it is the body which is doing the body therefore suffered and so on now two questions i will answer before making time for question and answer one is who erases the ego how does one erase the ego and so on we are governed by thoughts and among all thoughts there is a certain type of thought a category of thought a bunch of thoughts a genre of thoughts called ahankara it is not a single thought it is a category i am rich i am poor i am learned i have traveled around the world i am so handsome i am skilled and talented etc etc some number of descriptions of who i am 
constitute the ego. And there is suffering. This ego upon attending satsangs, upon getting exposed to Vedanta, it is this ego only which starts asking, who am I? Old habit is, who am I? I am the son of a very famous person of yester years, and I am now I am also famous, like my father was. So old habit. <laughs> but now, having attended Vedanta classes, the same person, the same bundle of memories which has constituted the ego, asks, wait a minute, wait a minute. I may be famous, my father was famous, my grandfather was famous. Leave that all. Who am I really? Therefore, it is the ego which only acts upon the ego. And then that question, who am I, rising from the ego, which is now Vedanta educated, it has taken upon a new journey. It has embarked upon a new adventure. So this I inquires, who am I? And Maharshi Ramana gives a touching example of how somebody dies and the funeral pyre is lit, the body is placed above the body and below the body and both sides of the body, wooden sticks are put and it is lighted up, fire is brought to it and then typically the son of the man who had died stirs the pyre with a little wooden stick. With a wooden stick, he stirs the pyre, stirs the uh, rest of the wood, so that it burns properly, burns better. And towards the end, the stick used to stir the funeral pyre gets shorter and shorter. It also is dropped into the fire. Therefore, that thought, which questions the very basis of all thoughts, that Question, who am I, also falls into the light and heat of the inquiry. Then in that last phase, there is neither the inquirer nor any more inquiry. That is one question. And the other is, what actually is the uh, process? The process, dear friends, in a simple way, if we are to put it, the process is go on weakening the hundreds of thoughts that are governing you presently with regard to the issue who you are and go on strengthening, not like a parrot just repeating words, but strengthen your understanding of who you are in the light of Vedanta statements which have said it, which have revealed the truth to you. You saw it an object at a little distance and you thought it's a snake, then you thought it's a garland, then you thought it's a fissure in the earth, then you thought some fourth, fifth, seventh, eighth thing. But a friend of yours comes and says, you are wondering what that is? I have seen it during broad daylight. What is lying over there, 10 feet from where we are standing, is a discarded rope. You ask the friend, hmm? are you sure? I am 100% sure. Even this afternoon, I had come here for some work. That rope was lying here. In the, in the evening, in dim light, the rope looks like a snake. Or some people mistake it to be, there's a crack in the earth there. It's not a crack. It is not a uh, snake. It's not a garland. It is a plain rope. So he gave you the revelation. He knows. Now, with the strength of that revelation, you take a look at whatever that object is with fresh eyes. Don't you get clear understanding? Maybe you will go a little near now, emboldened by the statement, it is rope. So nothing to fear. You go a bit near and maybe you turn your torch 
flashlight on then you see likewise friends we need patience we need shraddha shraddha van labate jnanam you and i better stop our going round and round in circles pursuing money and power fame and name all these egoistic activities let us just do our duties duties are not to be given up we do our duties without having personal ambition and we put all this energy that is saved into brahma vichara and therefore maharshi ramana says just as a diver goes into a well goes into the depth of the water looks for a lost ornament collects it and comes back here is the lost necklace the necklace had fallen into the water of the well the diver brings it out likewise we need to turn inward question examine our present notions about who we are and then we will find the truth of who we are therefore reflecting on vedanta vakyas the revelations of vedanta or coming coming down on the ego with all force who am i atma chintana brahmatma aikya chintana or atma vichar vichar means questioning inquiring these are little variations within the same process like within a raga in music i guess there are some slight variations therefore that is the way and the false ego conducts the inquiry to remove the false ego in the process the inquiring inquirer also vanishes this may be said om namo bhagavate vasudevaya thank you swami sitchidan ji it was a wonderful exposition of uh, erasure of ego now i will uh, request anybody and the audience would like to ask a question to swami ji uh, you are free to yes. ask please go ahead anybody has a question it's open to audience May I, Prabhu Ji, Purani Ma here? Yes, Purani Ma. Namaste, Swami Ji. Namaste. So uh, uh, we began uh, by saying pra- prakrute kriya manani everything, mm-hmm. and then we ended by saying, let us put our energies into understanding, into the self self inquiry. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. somewhere in between, we have that free will has come into operation there. Mm-hmm. Definitely. right now all of us are operating with free will definitely but the higher statement gives to us a glimpse of or an inkling of what it will be when using the free will in the right way you know takes us to those higher levels so bhagavad gita undoubtedly makes statements at level 9 out of scale of 10 level 8 then comes down to level 4 level 5 you know in second chapter her sri krishna even talks about or talks about how people will talk ill of you akirtim chapi bhutani kathayishyanti te avyayam you will become infamous they will say you ran away from the battlefield that is on a scale of 10 uh, you know it is level 3 or 4 it is more you know you are concerned with the reputation but it has a place of its own then somewhere he says be devoted to duty don't worry about anything else your concern should be about doing your duty well that is level 6 or 7 then this one you know what you are not a doer at all that is level 9 or mm. even level 10 so gita goes up and down and depending upon like they give the example right we carry a small vessel to the lake so much we can collect we carry a big big vessel 
we can bring more water. Therefore, it's not contradiction, uh, though technically it looks like a contradiction. It is what is said on higher levels and lower levels of perception of life. Free will is a lower level perception and most of us, including the speaker, are on that level most of the time. In deep sleep, we have no free will, <laughs> no destiny. We are in bliss. Mm. Or many other times also, when we are sometimes, let's say, deeply touched by beauty of nature, sunrise, or why sunrise and sunset? We take our grandchild on our lap, <laughs> and for a moment, we just don't want anything else. Just the face of the grandchild makes us so happy. Uh, so there are times, uh, noticed or unnoticed, whether we were conscious of it or unconscious of it, there are times when there is no ego in us. But that's not of much use. Through jnana, we must once for all eliminate this ego. So sorry, I went long. To answer your question, free will is a reality mm. on level 5 or 6. But on level 7, 8 or 9, as we get higher and higher, on the scale of 10, mm. the same free will which appeared to be such a solid reality becomes meaningless. You begin to smile at it. <laughs> okay. It's Thank an erroneous you. perception. It's an erroneous perception. Thank you very much, Pratswamiji. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hari Om, Swamiji. Hari Om. Uh, thanks for a great uh, 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 lightening uh, the talk on the ego. I have one um, uh, clarification or maybe expansion of uh, thought on this. Uh, ego is also called a chit jadagranti. It ah. sits in between the, the chit and, and the jada. Correct. Uh, why is that? Uh, because the prakriti has given this as a means to, as, a, as an interface to the world. As a shell like a, a coconut is a shell given to the individual to interact with the world okay. and eventually you know this expands into a much bigger entity with the memory everything added on top of it yes uh, why such you know it's a because when you said when you go back to the uh, realize the larger truth it become meaningless it dissolves mm -hmm. the example you gave of the uh, stick burning and yeah. disappearing yeah it, it, but it doesn't go away from a, a, you know, because it is used still. Even a realized master uses that interface yeah. to yeah. interact. Yeah. So how, how does, for a realized person, you know, how does uh, this tool used mm. in the larger context? Mm. Mm -hmm. till, you know, it, it has got its own meaning, use, etc. Mm. What is, the, you know, why it is given? Mm. Any, any thoughts on this, please? Why the ego is given to us? Yes. Yeah. So, on higher levels of Vedanta, a question is counter-questioned. When uh, this is said, uh, uh, we have an ego, it serves a certain purpose, uh, but at the same time, we wonder why at all we are given this ego. Uh, on a lower level, we explain uh, that is how good work needs to be done. Ramakrishna said to Vivekananda, I will not let you get realized now. I will keep a little ego in you so that you go around the world and do work. All this is given on a lower level. It is uh, motivating. You know, you and I then begin to believe that, yeah, I have some ego, but perhaps I have to be an instrument in the hands of God. I have to use this ego in me, which he has placed in me, for some good cause. And like Vivekananda did Ramakrishna's work and at the right time got liberated, we too perhaps, though we may not be so great as he was, we too perhaps have to do something with this. All this is very satisfying and it gives us a sense of nobility about life. But now, on the higher level, very high level, Vedanta says, you begin your question with the presumption, we have been given this ego, why? 
question that question or question that presumption question that have we been given this ego now we say yeah we are perceiving it is that right perception or erroneous perception two golden words in vedanta are samyak darshana right seeing and asamyak darshana and on the higher plane of vedanta almost the highest plane you know the unbelievable teaching is ajata vada neither the ego is created nor this world is created nothing ever has come into being most people will say namaste i don't want this philosophy <laughs> because it just doesn't appeal to them but you know it is something like how in physics too if you go to some 6th grade or 7th grade and talk very high physics you know they don't appeal to them they have to be given simple model of bohr's model or rutherford's model of atom there's a nucleus and electrons rotate they are very happy with that model it's only when they come to bsc msc etc that you may talk to students of physics issues like see all our experiments we take time axis but is time absolute is time unquestionably true so you question the very nature of time the very nature of space and i believe i don't know much though i have studied a little of this in the old olden days i believe in quantum physics etc it is you know they question what they call the deterministic model this these causes will lead to that result is the deterministic model and instead of the deterministic model where causes determine the or determine the result uh in the advanced physics it is all probability it is all it may happen this way it may happen that way therefore you may have heard if i may take a, one more minute to answer this einstein himself had great difficulty accepting quantum physics and he reacted i don't believe in the truth of this quantum physics which talks of probability rather than saying particular causes lead to particular results he said his famous statement is god does not play dice with the universe playing dice is you know chances you just throw those two cubical things then you say okay eight another time this time 10 and it's probability there's a high chance god does not play dice and he opposed the quantum physics but later on i believe he also was convinced before dying i think he accepted it likewise coming to this <clears throat> uh ego to say the ego is nothing but erroneous perception therefore to say why is this ego given or why has this ego come would be a questionable question has it come at all maharshi ramana used to say doubt the doubter someone is doubting so rather than uh, go into the content of that doubt because the doubter may have ask is there god that is his question rather than going into whether there is god or not who is this person asking does he really exist okay so my summary answer is um on the higher plane we begin to appreciate the truth that there is no such thing as ego at all on lower plane it's in the within the illusory framework the ego seems to operate within certain laws and those are the laws of papa and punya laws of dharma and adharma loss of you know you do right thing you will enjoy you do wrong things you will suffer now that is you know like the deterministic model of uh, universe sure somebody that answers thank you sort of answers finally <laughs> it just kind of it lifts us up this this kind of uh, revelations gaudapada says in that so called mandukya karika 
Etatadutamam Satyam. This is the Uttama Satya. Satyas also, there are many Satya. Etat tat Uttamam Satyam Yatra Kinchit Na Jayate. Where nothing is born at all. He refers to the universe. There is no universe at all. You know, and <laughs> people would take Advaita Vedanta to task. So they, therefore, we are called Maya Vadis and so on. When someone is unable to appreciate this very, very high philosophy, they will say this is escapism, this is uh, you know, such insult to God. God has created such a beautiful universe and you say there is no universe at all. So they call us blasphemous and what not. Swamiji, follow up uh, to that answer. Yeah. Does God play dies after all within the realm of Maya? Whatever happens, oh, yeah. uh, it is uh, it's all according to some grand plan, isn't it? Correct, exactly. He does not play dies, right? Correct. I mean, Einstein was right. You are right. That's what his whole life he examined and he gave new laws. You know, okay. even for uh, pointing out. Unlike we philosophers tend to do, we also are really good philosophers don't do it, but some of us half-baked philosophers, we just make a sweeping statement. Time is unreal, space is unreal and wind up. He actually examined the matter and he, I guess he gave even some equations. If, you know, if we travel on a spaceship that is uh, traveling at a speed closer to that of light. So to what extent time slows down? Our speed is 20% of the speed of light. Then time slows down. <laughs> Our speed is 40% of speed of light. Then time slows down more. So he gave a mathematical basis for the whole theory. Uh, therefore, you are right. He, uh, he had discovered a lot of laws. In fact, um, I must share with you another very beautiful statement he had made. What is incomprehensible about this universe is how everything is comprehensible, he said. How everything seems to be within some framework of rules itself makes us awestruck. So you are right. The way you summarized, whatever one notch below, God does not play dice. Everything seems to be as per some law. But one notch above, everything seems to be breaking down. The laws break down. And in the Vedanta, not only the laws, but that whole setting where the laws are supposed to operate, that itself loses its validity. The whole edifice uh, crumbles. <laughs> yeah. whole edifice crumbles, correct. Einstein did not go that far. Perhaps he appreciated some such statements. Mm -hmm. Who is that? Uh, Erwin Schrodinger, Albert Einstein, and uh, a few others deeply appreciated Eastern wisdom. But their discipline required that before they made a statement in some lecture in a science, science, science co conference, they had to have uh, some rationale, not conjecture. This looks like a conjecture or this looks like a uh, speculation. Though we say it's not speculation, it is the truth the Rishi has discovered and we should go about it with Shraddha. But as you know, in a science congress, Shraddha is not a welcome word. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That's the issue. Thank you so yeah, much. Scientists, scientists may not be against Shraddha, but in a science congress, they say this is not a place for Shraddha. Here we'll talk only through reason and data, experimental results and so They also on. start with a hypothesis, right? <laughs> they do. They do. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. They start Thank with the hypothesis. Yes. Uh, but the spiritual sadhana, that too is a kind of experiment, right? We are experimenting on ourselves. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, and it's a high-risk experiment. Yes. Yeah. 
sometimes if something goes wrong like meditation that time kundli kundalini i have heard such stories like right. some people go go gurus. mad uh, yeah. some people go oh. in fact uh, you are so right just two weeks ago i heard a case a boy had gone to iit guwahati one of the later iits it's been there for 20 years now and got a nice job in it an it company in bangalore and i was uh, i knew his parents i thought he must be doing very well maybe now married maybe has some two children but last two weeks ago i came to know he tried some kundalini and uh, he lost his sanity he is insane now and what a tragedy you know his parents who are in their 70s they have to look after their son a graduate from iit guwahati and was a performer computer science professional in bangalore they have to look after him like uh, you know uh, challenge a child they can't even let him go to the bazaar they are living in some town in gujarat at that age rather than enjoying some security such as children grandchildren and etc they have to take care of him second time but uh, the counterpoint there is all life is a risk only all life you know, so not only army navy and air force <laughs> but even if we are in a so called safe town of south india there are some risks but can those uh, can his parents save him or like taking him to some guru or they they have been trying guidance yeah. and they have been they have, they have, they have done be... yeah yeah okay they, yeah, they are very learned people okay. the father himself was a professor in a you know there is a institute uh, in uh, gujarat irma in institute of rural management at anand anand is the place where that amul milk industry you know kurians so there there is one reputed institute institute of rural management anand irma he was a professor there he had done his uh, uh, something equivalent to phd from iim ahmedabad and so on so they are and they are very believing people in god in spirituality so they have been trying last 3 or 4 years i am given to understand both spiritual gurus and so on as well as counselors psychiatrists etc and it's so hard the boy doesn't cooperate sometimes okay and very often he doesn't he thinks there is no problem with him but he lies in the house without doing anything now we about 36 year old i think he is he just uh, lays lazily he remains at home i so don't know maybe predestined could be god could would be. have some plan for him that that should be yeah. maybe there, there is some plan i hope i hope who knows so i was shocked when i got this news two weeks ago and uh, who knows in another two weeks i may get some good news you know now there is an update that boy is coming back to normal <laughs> the madi may say i would be delighted to get that definitely mm-hmm. we'll pray for him <laughs> that's right we must pray for such uh, cases sorry it's fell down yeah 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 definitely but it's so frustrating and i felt great sorrow about what the parents are going through one more doubt is the ego hmm. that is actually part of our desire right if we can make us come to that chitta vritti nirodha state hmm. all these will be gone right hmm. but god knows when that will happen <laughs> yeah so chitta vritti nirodha you are referring to cessation cessation of thoughts mm-hmm. yeah yeah right so for that with prabhu ji's guidance we are you are doing shambhavi mudra meditation so correct maybe one day <laughs> yeah yeah sure sure 
Actually, actually they comes. say, right, in uh, even some pranayama, etc., we should not do on our own. Uh, so, with Prabhuji's guidance, if you do uh, certain kriyas, definitely, because he has been doing for some years, he has seen the ups and downs, that's as simple as that. It's not because of, because some book has said you should have a guru that we go to a guru. Uh, there is a logic behind it. The guru has to walk the path and has found the pitfalls, has learned his lessons. Therefore, he will help us be more careful. That's the whole idea. But if there is some places, uh, some misuse of the guru, that's a different matter. In all professions, there is misuse. True. True. <laughs> So, wonderful uh, session, Swamiji, and uh, beautiful questions and answers. Uh, we are coming to the conclusion. Uh, Swamiji, just one question. Sa Shantim Adigachati, is you started with that. Who is this Saha Shantim Adigachati? No, audio, audio is no. There's no audio. Samiji, you have to unmute it. Unmute. Am I audible now? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I don't know what I pressed. I was actually pressing something on the screen. Mm -hmm. I should have kept quiet. <laughs> so, uh, are you asking in that expression, Saha Shantim Adigachati? Uh, who is it who gets Shanti? Yeah, it is that illusory ego was suffering mm. and uh, it is the illusory ego only which weakens itself by right practices, by right thinking. And after all, the ego is never independent. It is an appearance upon the pure self. Therefore, though the language seems to indicate a duality, there is someone to experience Shanti and there is Shanti somewhere else. Uh, the truth of the matter is it's just the elimination of a falsely created duality. So therefore our title also is very appropriate. We are only to erase the ego. We are only to get out of erroneous perception. So the, this person who was uh, unhappy before was part of the illusion. That the, that's an interesting part. One who has some uh, confusion is not apart from the confusion, he is part of the confusion. Somewhere else, you know, I may be confused about uh, whether uh, New York is the capital of US or Washington DC, you know. So I am not part of that question. New York is New York, DC is DC. I am an individual living in Bangalore. Whereas in this matter of uh, avidya, spiritual ignorance, this avidya is a, because of lack of any other word, it's a phenomenon in which the entity that is suffering from avidya doesn't stand apart from avidya. It's part of the avidya. So the entity that is suffering from avidya and avidya itself together subside and vanish. There is no one who can remain later to say, you know, for so many years I suffered from avidya. Just last week onwards I am free from it. There is nobody to celebrate. So that's that stick actually. The stick also is burnt away. Uh, to, to me, it appears uh, so uh, beautiful, going well with modern science. Because modern science also goes to edges of, it goes to edges of uh, uh, the setup itself. Like when they say in modern science, uh, advanced experiments cannot ignore the observer in observation. The observer has to be part of what is being examined. 
in ordinary experiments you and i have done engineering you and i have done lot of you know technical stuff in ordinary experiments we are not part of the <laughs> experiment or uh, results we put in the chemistry lab we take some chemical then puts another chemical then see what happens how it color changes what fumes come whether i am wearing dhoti and shirt i am wearing pant or shirt i am wearing it <laughs> that doesn't matter i have, i don't count there but in advanced science uh, the observer is he stationary the simplest example is is the observer stationary or the observer moving has to be taken into account right so uh, that seems to go so well with the, our avidya issue and we want to when we want to dismantle or remove avidya have you wondered who it is who wants to remove avidya is a valid question and then he say yeah i, I do uh, i let yes i will include myself who am i then only the inquiry is complete so lastly uh, to say one more statement on this removing avidya is not at all like removing a virus from our body because virus before the virus entered also i existed after virus was taken out of the system i exist but ahankara doesn't exist without avidya if you remove avidya ahankara also is gone the one who had avidya also is gone avidya doesn't touch the pure self anyhow so it's a very puzzling scenario but uh, it has to be so there is a question right you also have i'm sure explained to your classes who gets avidya brahman gets avidya or body gets avidya the mind gets avidya kasya avidya 13th chapter second shloka shankara's commentary there is a long discussion kasya avidya then shankara's answer is yasya prashna tasya avidya the one who is asking the question has it <laughs> he doesn't say hey, the body has avidya or mind has avidya the indriyas have avidya or the atma the pure atma one day evening while going for walk got hit by avidya <laughs> there is no there is no uh, entity that hosts avidya you know, hosting so there's a question on the uh, chat box is the entity oh, a product okay. of entity is the entity a product of avidya or is the entity part of the avidya ego is not a product of avidya or ego and avidya are one this is the question ah so ego and avidya are one i would say are on par and in english there is one more word there is no need really to bring another word but if you if you like co evil co evil c o e v a l Mm-hmm. so avidya and ahankara are co evil they are on par uh, we can't say ahankara is product of avidya nor can we say avidya is product of ahankara we can we would rather say where there is avidya there is ahankara where there is ahankara there is avidya they rise together they subside together at a given point of time you may pay more attention to the avidya and less to ahankara or more attention to ahankara but they have risen together like two sides of the same coin that's that's how i have understood things i am no authority on anything <laughs> we are all students you know we are sailing in the same boat some of us may be sitting in the little front of the boat <laughs> Okay. Uh, with that, we'll conclude for today's session. Thank you. Great, Mr. Right. Swami ji. Thank you for coming. Uh, uh, I thank you. I thank everybody in the Light of Self Foundation. I enjoyed being with you. Okay. Namaste. Okay. Let us close with a prayer. Asato ma sadgamaya tamaso ma jyotir gamaya mrityor ma amritam gamaya Om Shanti Shanti. शांति ही पूर्णमद पूर्णमिद पूर्णा पूर्णमुदुच्य पूर्णस्य 
ओणमादाय ओणमेवशिष्यते ओं शांति 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 लोका समस्ता सुखिनो लोका समस्ता सुखिनो लोका समस्ता सुखिनो हरि ओं श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओं Thank you very much, Swamiji. Thanks Thank for you. Coming. Thank you.